Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the most entertaining and hilarious impressions from the political sphere on Saturday Night Live. You people don't quit now, do you? Now. Number 30, John Lovitz as Michael Dukakis. When coming up against Dana Carvey's George H.W. Bush, John Lovitz decided to compete with his co-star by using subtlety. Do you think you have the necessary passion to lead this country? Well, Sam, that uh, kind of aspersion on my character quite frankly makes me, uh, well, there's no other word for it, enraged. His underrated take on the presidential candidate doesn't steal the spotlight, but he does have an enjoyable way of staying cool. This comes out in a funny debate and the entertaining Dukakis After Dark sketch. You were going to raise taxes, weren't you? <laughs> well, you bet I was. <laughs> Through the roof. He also gets to deliver the occasional one-liner that's both accurate and hilarious. When he's not revealing his amazing language skills, Lovitz also employs some killer eyebrows. While this actor usually plays broad comedy, this version of Governor Dukakis lets him show off his subdued acting abilities. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the choice is obvious. Thank you very much. Number 29, Daryl Hammond as Al Gore. Some might have argued that Al Gore wasn't an easy impression, but Daryl Hammond easily defied the odds with this performance. In his plan, the wealthiest 1% of Americans would receive nearly 50% of the benefits. He practically disappears into the vice president with his southern accent. After watching his take on Gore at the first debate, you might come away laughing and muttering the word lockbox to yourself. Jim, could I just add that in my plan, the lockbox would be used only for Social Security and Medicare. It would have two different locks. He combines these catchphrases with crazy and outlandish sketches. Competing with Will Ferrell's George W. Bush, Hammond delivers the goods as a long-winded version of the politician. The comedian battles Ferrell with a surprisingly goofy presence of his own, as he even sings with his co-star. Babe. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Number 28, Cecily Strong as Marjorie Taylor Greene. In the hands of a versatile comedian like Cecily Strong, this political figure really comes alive. I know, you know what? They're calling me Congress's new it girl. Oh, it like the new thing? No, it like the evil clown that preys on children. Marjorie Taylor Greene is not exactly the most guarded individual, and the performer really makes that known. You could even call this impersonation crazy, down to everything from her love of guns to her hilarious sneezes. Sorry, Colin, I, I have to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Strong's take on Green delves into scientific issues and hot topics with a funny twist. You could also call her a fighter, getting aggressive about almost anything in an entertaining way. She even visits Sesame Street armed to the teeth in one sketch. Today's episode is brought to you by Q, not the letter the man. He will tell us when JFK Jr., who is alive, will reveal himself and help President Trump reclaim his rightful throne. The impression doesn't let up with memorable and opinionated rants that'll have you laughing. Number 27, Chris Redd as Cory Booker. Even if this senator isn't the most obvious target, he has a few qualities that Chris Redd utilizes for comedic effect. I'm blessed to be here. The actor leads with his eyes in order to steal the debate spotlight. Trying to stay hip, this Cory Booker works through his desperation in increasingly funny ways. Red's take on Booker looks like a deer in the headlights as he tries to make his limited time count. And I should point out that we're limiting the amount of time you can speak based on how well you're doing in the polls. So, Cory, you get five words. Um, impeach Trump now because trouble? Capturing the comedy of a politician who can't win, the comedian does an impressive job of earning laughs in only a few lines. The performer also plays him at committee hearings as he hopes to impress people. If this leader runs for president again, SNL should invite the actor back to talk about Rosario Dawson. Rosario and I were discussing this very issue just the other day. Rosario Dawson. Number 26, Bill Hader as Jim Jordan. As one of the best impressionists in SNL history, Bill Hader is more than prepared to take on Jim Jordan. Mr. Chairman, good afternoon to you, you oh. lying piece of human trash! 
The congressman tries to question Michael Cohen without completely losing his mind. While turning up the volume, Hayter makes this politician into a hilarious and hot-headed caricature. They even find time to make fun of the target's wardrobe. I'm so angry I couldn't even wear a jacket today! <laughs> With the other committee members giving him more time, Jordan keeps digging a hole for himself in amusing rants. The frequent mistakes and dead-end questioning allow the comedian to shine. Opposite Ben Stiller's Cohen, the performer turns up the heat as the buffoonish character that can't catch a break. Mr. Cohen has pled guilty to a smorgasbord of fraudulent activity. Yeah, and then right after that it says, at the direction of President Trump. It does? Oh, damn it! <laughs> Number 25. Amy Poehler as Hillary Clinton Leading up to the 2008 election season, Amy Poehler found the comedy in Hillary Clinton. Her concept for the character revolves around her failed attempts to become president. Uh, a few nights ago, you lost badly to Senator Obama in Wisconsin. In theory, isn't that a, isn't that a state you should have won? Not at all, John. <laughs> Poehler also dials up Clinton's passive aggression for some amazing confrontations, the latter of which includes an amazing sketch with Tina Fey. Can you believe it, Hillary? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot! Whether she's talking to the Alaska governor or debating Barack Obama, this character has some hilarious reactions to her defeats. The comedian plays the politician's emotions like a high-wire act of hilarity. You don't know whether this Clinton will laugh, scream, or cry at any moment. This all adds up to a wonderful piece of comedic acting, giving the actress one of her best impersonations. <laughs> do, do I really laugh like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well. Right, Number 24. Chris Farley as Newt Gingrich When the great Chris Farley did anything, he never gave anything less than 100%. This is especially true in the case of his off-the-wall Newt Gingrich impression. Mr. Speaker, Mr. DeLay of Texas. I propose that the Democrats only be allowed to speak for eight seconds at a time. Fine, all in favor? Aye! Motion passes! Infusing his explosive energy into every line, Farley couldn't help but make the politician more hyper. His performance as the Speaker of the House features some brilliant comic timing and lots of gavel banging. The comedian even plays Gingrich against his mother, seeing his more personal side with surprising results. Do you understand? Yes, nudie. All right. I love you, Mom! It's a funny and manic twist on the 1990s political figure. Through it all, the legendary performer never lets up with his wildly entertaining spin. Okay! H.R. 590, the proposal that live from New York, it's Saturday night! Number 23, Daryl Hammond as Bill Clinton. As a go-to impressionist from his era, Daryl Hammond strikes again with one of his signature roles. Now once again, I don't know what my position is. And then I thought about it, and I remembered my position. I don't have one. <laughs> Hammond had huge shoes to fill taking on the U.S. president for the 1990s and early 2000s. His interpretation allowed him to be playful, mischievous, and charismatic all at the same time. The result was a fabulous send-up of Bill Clinton's highs and lows, giving the commander-in-chief a humorous edge. What? Yeah. I just bit my lip and did the thumb thing. How'd you know? <laughs> Hammond's performance plays with the charisma of the politician as well as the scandals of his later presidency. Even with all of the serious topics surrounding him, this Clinton flashes his smile and trademark mannerisms to get audiences laughing. God bless you, America, and Colin, thank you. Number 22, James Austin Johnson as Donald Trump. In a long history of great Donald Trump impressions, James Austin Johnson might just be the most accurate. You know what? Sleepy Joe Biden is such a disaster. <laughs> We're coming back. We're coming back in 2024. We're doing the reboot, okay? Everyone loves reboots. People loved it before. They're gonna like it again. His vocal impersonation is so spot on that it's both scary and funny in equal measure. Along with getting the voice right, Johnson can also go on a trademark ramble as the politician. The stream of consciousness delivery makes for some truly hilarious segments that reference pop culture. Speaking of white people, John Mayer. The performer plays up the real man's complexities while also creating a character that's completely absurd in every way. Thankfully, the impressionist finds enough comedy here to poke fun at the headlines and create his own stamp on the man. And Grinch was very bad when he stole Christmas. <laughs> But I got it back. I brokered a historic deal with Grinch and Netanyahu. And 
We decided that no Christmas would ever be stolen again. Number 21, Maya Rudolph as Kamala Harris. With the bubbly energy of Maya Rudolph, this Kamala Harris impression truly comes alive. The font is back, baby! <laughs> America's fun aunt! I'm also America's cool aunt. The c you know what? <laughs> it's arguably the closest anyone has come to nailing the essence of the vice president. The key to this impersonation is the leader's insistence on being relevant. Using memes and internet slang, Rudolph's version tries desperately to play with the younger crowds. There have been two black women elected to the Senate, and that second black woman, it me. <laughs> It's also impressive to see a new take on a much newer public figure that goes beyond the usual vocals. From Harris's family life to her debates with Mike Pence, Rudolph captures the politician with physical and verbal comedy. The comedian lights up any appearance as the VP, walking the line between authentic and wonderfully campy. And I'm just, I'm just gonna play a quick song on my phone. <laughs> Number 20, Matt Damon as Brett Kavanaugh. Sure, this may have been a one-off impression. What? But Matt Damon surprised everyone with how well he nailed Judge Brett Kavanaugh's defense demeanor during his high-profile misconduct hearing in 2018. I'm gonna start at an 11. I'm gonna take it to about a 15 real quick. The cold open sequence was certainly an ensemble piece, but the whole thing hinged upon how well Damon could deliver an impression of someone who was growing more and more irritated at a line of questioning. Did you ever drink too many beers? You mean, was I cool? Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, the performance reached the crescendo of Damon shotgunning a beer before starting the show proper, kicking things off in note-perfect fashion. <laughs> and live from New York, it's Saturday night! Number 19, Fred Armisen as Michael Bloomberg. You don't always have to be running at 200% to deliver laughs on the SNL stage. Sometimes, a little bit of subtlety goes a long way. Hello, I'm Michael Bloomberg. This was definitely the case when it came to Fred Armisen's portrayal of former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. There's one person America's gun owners will listen to, it's a Northeastern Jewish billionaire. <laughs> Armisen's low energy delivery was on purpose and on point. His semi-mumbling inflection was perfectly paired with Bobby Moynihan's volatile Chris Christie during a sketch about Hurricane Sandy. And los proximos dias, los personas blancas de New York is to rot irritable with the mal humor. Armisen's return to the character during the 2020 U.S. presidential race was similarly spot on. How'd you get past security? Well, I just walked in coughing and everybody got out of my way. <laughs> Number 18, Will Ferrell as Janet Reno. Consider this one something of a forgotten gem when it comes to SNL political impressions. Say, I really like that song a lot. I want to dance to that one again. Former Attorney General Janet Reno wasn't exactly known as the life of the party when she served under President Bill Clinton. But you would not know that if you just paid attention to Will Ferrell's impersonation. Do you know one disease they can't prevent? Uh, no. These diseases. My two fists. Now get out and stop giving away condoms. <laughs> It didn't matter that Farrell wasn't spot on when it came to capturing her on a personal level. It was more about the idea of Reno in something as ridiculous as, say, a boxing match with Rudy Giuliani that made it funny. You box dirty! Then how comes my conscience is so clean? <laughs> Plus, Farrell's deadpan delivery and purse-lipped dialogue delivers giggles on their own. Number 17, Beck Bennett as Vladimir Putin. Sometimes the easiest, most direct approach is best for comedic impersonations. Or at least this seems to be the case when it comes to Beck Bennett, who absolutely nails his parody of Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Wait, but if we have no blackmail, why President Trump says such nice things about you? I don't know! I think he just likes me. Bennett goes full tilt into James Bond villain mode here, portraying him as a devious, confident, and self-obsessed megalomaniac who never wears a shirt if he doesn't have to. You are worried that your country is in the hands of this unpredictable man. But don't worry, it's not. <laughs> Of course, it helps that Bennett has the look and facial expressions to pull it off, not to mention nailing Putin's manner of speech to hilarious effect. We think you are the best candidate. Sure. The smartest candidate. No doubt. The Manchurian candidate. I don't know what that means, but it sounds tremendous. <laughs> Number 16, Norm MacDonald as Bob Dole. 
Norm MacDonald is a comedian's comedian, a man who has earned both respect from his peers and laughs from the audience. SNL fans were certainly laughing back when McDonald was playing former presidential candidate and senator Bob Dole on the show. Next time, ask. Nobody eats Bob Dole's peanut butter without asking. Whatever. Norm made it a point to emphasize Dole's habit of referring to himself in the third person, while also capturing Dole's pencil-holding deadpan delivery. I'm President Bob Dole, President of the United States. Nice to meet you, Ambassador. <laughs> this must be your lovely wife. Assistant, sorry. McDonald was surly and grumpy, yet remarkably charismatic in his performance as Dole. And it's something we're still laughing about today. Number 15. Kate McKinnon as Jeff Sessions You can always count on Kate McKinnon to deliver a great impression. This is my best good friend, Kelly Ann. <laughs> she ain't got no legs. The gifted comedian just seems to have honed her talent at commanding accents, as well as her subject's personal idiosyncrasies. George Conway, do not subtweet me at the dinner table, please. McKinnon is also just as accomplished a transformation, as evidenced by her multiple political impressions of subjects as varied as Kellyanne Conway, Rudy Giuliani, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So you have no plans to leave the Supreme Court? Colin, mm -hmm. the bench is now my porch. I'm going to sit on it all day and scream, no, get out of my yard. <laughs> it's her take on former U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions that had us rolling, however, thanks to the exaggerated Southern accent, as well as Sessions' reportedly sycophantic relationship with President Trump. Hello, I'm Jeff Sessions, and I love you, Mr. Trump. When you fired me, did I write some nasty tell-all book? No. It didn't matter whether McKinnon was portraying Sessions on Weekend Update or parodying Forrest Gump. Her impression was always solid gold. I was on the cover of the New York Times, you want to see? This says you might have committed perjury. Yeah, I had a bad week. <laughs> Number 14, Jim Carrey as Joe Biden. Just one second, Chris. say, Joe Biden just seemed tailor-made for an SNL political impression, as evidenced by the numerous cast members and guest hosts who tried their hand at the former vice president. Large and in charge, the president's away and Joe will play. Jason Sudeikis, Woody Harrelson, and John Mulaney all did killer jobs with their respective impersonations. The year was 19 Ricky Ticky Tabby. <laughs> And me and Nelson Mandela were palling around South Africa. But our pick here is Jim Carrey, who's portrayed Biden in a recurring role. But I think we all needed a break. Isn't that satisfying? Although not everyone saw the real Biden in Carrey's energetic interpretation, we've got to give it up for Carrey's inner monologue during debate sketches with Alec Baldwin's Trump. I said two words, you son of a no. <laughs> Don't do it, Joe. <laughs> We love the machismo Joe, the exasperated candidate who's down for push-up contests, name-calling, and tagging in Kamala Harris to intervene on his behalf. He's a nice boy. Kamala, oh, I got this. Uh -uh, Joe. Let Mamala go to work. <laughs> Number 13, Chevy Chase as Gerald Ford. Former President Gerald Ford was always athletic, but all it took was one stumble out of Air Force One to earn a reputation for clumsiness. Hello. Hello. This served as a perfect opportunity for SNL to cement their very first iconic political impression with Chevy Chase's classic fan favorite portrayal. Yes, well, on that point, Mr. Cake, Kate. Kathan Krause, Mr. Krause. Chase took his physical comedy to the very limit, utilizing elaborate pratfalls to the point of actual injury, all to get a laugh. Now, as we can see, the Ford popularity is certainly on a sharp rise here. It worked, to the point where even the president himself was a fan, appearing on the show and even inviting Chase out to play golf. Number 12, Daryl Hammond as Dick Cheney. Daryl Hammond is a master of impressions, and successfully tried his luck impersonating a number of political figures during his tenure at SNL. However, it's Hammond's take on former Vice President Dick Cheney that stands alongside his Bill Clinton as one of the comedian's most well-known parodies. If you shoot another friend, will you keep it a secret? 
Hammond hams it up and does his best to play with Cheney's public persona as the evil puppet mastermind behind the George W. Bush administration, while getting a lot of laughs in the process. Happy Valentine's, Mr. Cheney. It's hot here in Iraq. I can't wait for you to get here so you can suck. I don't think I need to finish that. <laughs> that sneaky snarl, those side-eye glances, it's all part of Hammond's hilarious take on a polarizing man. Number 11, Jay Farrow as Barack Obama. It was Fred Armisen who first took aim at Barack Obama with his unique and slightly strange impression, but that performance was certainly improved upon once Jay Farrow took over the role. Questions like, is this the first step towards war? What can the United States do? And hold up, what's Crimea? <laughs> Farrow easily ticks all of the boxes when it comes to capturing Obama's well-known cadence, phrasing, and manner of speech, while at the same time capturing that certain level of political swagger the former president has. Desperate times call for desperate measures. So I bought in a friend. Liam, come in here. Jay Farrow is a skilled comedian and impressionist, but this might be some of his best work. Number 10, Alec Baldwin as Donald Trump. How are you both doing this week? Really, really great, Aaron. They're all still buying it. With his recurring impersonation of Donald Trump, guest star Alec Baldwin has become a sort of de facto cast member. Alec Baldwin earned rave reviews and laughs when he parodied the Donald on the campaign trail, so it made sense that the award-winning actor would return to the role once Trump took office. You must have known the optics on that would be terrible. Come on, do you think I care about optics? Look at me, I sit on every chair like it's a toilet, okay? Baldwin nails a funny and exaggerated take on many of Trump's well-known personal quirks and mannerisms, and never shies away from tackling the more controversial topics that were at the center of news outlets during the president's campaign. Ma'am, I don't know if you know this, but you're in an island in the water. <laughs> The ocean water, big ocean, with fishies and bubbles and turtles that bite. Number nine, Will Ferrell as George W. Bush. Al, listen, we, we got a lot of work here. Don't worry, we'll get to Bush Sr. later on the list. Will Ferrell first introduced his W impersonation in 1999 to wild reviews. Kane wasn't afraid to tell people his honest opinion, straightforward. What a nut. <laughs> Presenting Bush Jr. as naive, simple, and in over his head, Farrell lampooned the president while also nailing his accent, squint, and difficulties with grammar. I believe that some of his figures may be inaccurate. <laughs> Once Farrell left the cast, others tried to take on the mantle, but no one quite measured up to Farrell. In fact, his impersonation was so good, he adapted it into the Broadway play You're Welcome, America, a final night with George W. Bush. Farrell reprised his role a few times on SNL, too, including in 2018 with an important message. So I just wanted to address my fellow Americans tonight and remind you guys that I was really bad. <laughs> Number 8, Dan Aykroyd as Richard Nixon. This not-ready-for-primetime player was notable for a couple of presidential impersonations, including a memorable stint as Jimmy Carter during the early seasons of Saturday Night Live. Peter, what did the acid look like? Dan Aykroyd also did a very successful impression of Richard Nixon to boot, standing out among the myriad of other comics who were taking their shot at the infamous ex-president. Now, when I was president, I... I did some bad things. <laughs> Copying Nixon's idiosyncratic, hunched-over gait and penchant for waving victory signs was the easy part. You don't have to read it, although I originally wrote it to be read. More challenging was trying to get laughs portraying a man who was so disliked and controversial. Ackroyd succeeded, however, going on to portray Nixon a total of ten times from 1976 to 1979. Do you think I'm a crook? Take it out on the book. Number 7, Kate McKinnon as Hillary Clinton. If Baldwin's Trump was good, then Kate McKinnon's parody of Hillary Clinton was even better. I'm angry too, because the top 10% of the top 1% control 90% of the wealth in this country. And I've always said that. McKinnon's place as one of SNL's funniest faces was already secure before she took on this role. But if anything, Kate's impression of Hillary has made her even more popular. Gosh, New York has been cold this week, hasn't it? In fact, my head is getting a little chilly. I better put on my favorite hat that I've worn so many times over the years. <laughs> 
Maybe it's McKinnon's ability to tap into Clinton's awkward public persona, or perhaps it was the laugh she got portraying how badly Hillary wanted to win the election. I cannot wait to be your next president, if I'm elected, of course. Not getting ahead of myself in public. In private, I've been president for 15 years. Or maybe it was that somber cold opening in the wake of a Trump victory, where, in character, McKinnon sang a stirring rendition of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. The baffled king composing Hallelujah. Honestly, it was all of that and more. This was a brilliant performance. Number six, Dana Carvey as George H.W. Bush. These financial regulations are important to yeah. prevent bubbles. Absolutely. We got a lot of bubbles. And it seems as if SNL icon Dana Carvey can impersonate just about anyone. But it was the world of politics that gave us some of the cast members' most memorable bits. When it came to his impersonation of George H.W. Bush, Carvey had a lot of material to work with during the course of Bush's presidency. You see, this election's about who can take the heat. It's hot in there, very hot. <laughs> But it's the comedian's uncanny ability to mimic the former president's voice and mannerisms, especially during monologues and debates, that are probably best remembered. Oh, and in case you're worried, don't worry. There's more Carvey ahead on the list. Kind of short down in this area down here. <laughs> Would love to be up here, but I'm down here. Number five, Melissa McCarthy as Sean Spicer. We return to another Trump era SNL impersonation for our next entry. Uh, I'll accept one last question, yeah, I'll take this loser. Melissa McCarthy surprised everyone in 2017 when she appeared on Saturday Night Live to impersonate former White House press secretary Sean Spicer. Because I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm here to swallow gum and I'm here to take Nate. <laughs> The comedian's natural affinity for physical comedy and mimicry brought the house down. And it wasn't long before McCarthy was making regular appearances as Spicer. Her impression was loud, colorful, and boisterous. And we loved every minute of it. A Wall Street Journal, are, are you okay? <laughs> Even Sean Spicer admitted that it was, quote, kind of funny, although he said his boss didn't see it that way. Number four, Larry David as Bernie Sanders. If there was ever an SNL impersonation that left people wanting more, it was this one. Hello, hello, hello. Enough with the hellos, let's, let's do this. Comedian and Seinfeld co-creator Larry David seemed born to play Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, sliding into the role like a pair of old, comfortable shoes. Millions of people on the streets! And we gotta do something! And we gotta do it now! <laughs> yeah. Any SNL debate sketch was immediately enhanced by David's impression of Sanders' righteous indignation and anger. Not to mention some good-natured ribbing about the senator's age. So shake you, my hand. You, you coughed into your hand. Don't shake it after a cough. No, I didn't. Shake, shake my hand. No. His loud and boisterous freakouts never failed to get the audience roaring. As it turns out, the two were actually distant cousins. So maybe David had a bit of a genetic advantage here. Always a bridesmaid, never the Democratic nominee. Number three, Phil Hartman as Bill Clinton. Hillary's other half is up next on our list, this time portrayed by the much missed Phil Hartman. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the SNL legend had already impressed with his smart and satirical take on former President Reagan. Yet even that performance was eclipsed by his dead-on impression of William Jefferson Clinton. Well, I just want to mingle with the American people, talk with some real folks, maybe get a Diet Coke or something. <laughs> right, fine. But please, don't tell Mrs. Clinton. Jim, let me tell you something. There's going to be a whole bunch of things we don't tell Mrs. Clinton. Hartman wasn't one note in his work and did his best to capture everything about Clinton. His affable charisma, his Arkansas accent, his taste for fast food, his relationship with Hillary, and his role as commander-in-chief. Above all else, though, it was just funny. A perfect impression from one of SNL's greatest talents. This administration has been more open about its affairs than any previous administration. Number two, Dana Carvey as Ross Perot. Former presidential candidate Ross Perot may not exist front and center within the public consciousness much anymore. Live from New York, home of the Yankees, it's Saturday night! But there was a time when this self-made man was everywhere in the news. As a result, Perot's fiery third-party campaign for the White House made for a perfect SNL parody from veteran cast member Dana Carvey. Well, if I'm a quitter, why am I back in the race? See? Case closed. 
For starters, Carvey nails Perot's memorable laugh, as well as his quick manner of speech, strange non sequiturs, and knack for sidebar colloquialisms. Who told you that the Republican Party is involved in trying to teach dogs to talk? <laughs> well, you know, you know, now we're just playing games here, huh? <laughs> just playing football. The impression also captures the zeitgeist of the time, this feeling that Perot might actually have a chance to lead a third-party candidate to the highest seat in American public service. Tomorrow you can interview Superman Dean Cain, he'll be here, but tonight you must focus, please, I beg you. It doesn't matter that Perot wasn't successful in his bid, because Carvey's work here remains classic. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tina Fey as Sarah Palin It's one of the most beloved and most well-known political parodies in SNL history. The time Tina Fey took a shot at vice presidential hopeful Sarah Palin. Are there parts of the country that you consider un-American? Oh, you know, that was just my lame attempt at a joke, but, um, <laughs> yes, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Delaware, California. <laughs> Fey won a Primetime Emmy Award in 2009 for her portrayal of the former Alaskan governor, a nuanced performance that both skewered Palin's political prowess, or lack thereof, and lightheartedly poked fun at her beauty queen appearance, accent, and use of colloquialisms. And now I'd like to entertain everybody with some fancy pageant walking. <laughs> it was a smash hit, and Faye would return to the role a number of times for SNL, securing the character as a high point in the show's long-running history of political comedy. Thank you, Iowa! Oh, I wanted to take a break from my full-time career of writing things on Facebook. Did we forget another fantastic political impression? Let us know in the comments below. Hey. Hey. Back to work! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.